public procurement uh, gives a huge share in the whole economy of European Union. About 19% of the whole European uh, economy is driven through public institutions and public procurement. So it is very important to understand how these things work, not only know the law, but also to get the insights from someone who has the inside experience. And that's why I'm very glad to introduce uh, uh, my colleagues from Scandinavian countries and from Lithuania who will share their experiences and who have donated their time to come here and to tell us what they know, what they feel, and what uh, most prob problematic areas of public procurement are in their countries. We will start with uh, Norway. I'm sorry I did not uh, introduce in Lithuanian, but uh, our working language uh, will be English, just uh, so that everybody keeps on the same track and we have a more, pr more fruitful discussion afterwards. Uh, I will be thankful if you keep your questions reserved until the very end when we have the questions and answers session concentrated instead of uh, using the questions, instead of asking the questions after each of the pre separate presentations. So I would like to introduce our first speaker, uh, Isabel Fjetland, who will speak about the peculiarities of the Norwegian public procurement law. Thank you. Good afternoon, and thank you for coming. I'm very happy to see that so many people are interested in hearing about the Norwegian procurement system and their opportunities in Norway. First of all, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Isabel Fjetland. I work as an associate at Kluge that has a very close collaboration with Magnuson. I'm a part of the public procurement team um, and I assist both public and private clients. Public clients, we help by planning and drafting the procurement papers and uh, carrying through the procurement. We also help them handling complaints. Private clients, we help by submitting tenders and by reviewing the procedure. We also assist them by, with complaints. I am here to talk about the Norwegian procurement system. The aim to today is to give you a short introduction into the Norwegian procurement system. It is unfortunately not possible to give you a fully presentation of the Norwegian procurement system within a time frame of 30 minutes. However, I guess you already are providers to the Lithuanian authorities and that you therefore already are familiar with the EU legislation on procurement. Today, I will therefore only address special features in the Norwegian procurement law. I divided my presentation into four parts. Firstly, I will give you some facts about Norwegian procurement market. Secondly, I will give you a short introduction in the Norwegian procurement system. Thirdly, I will, uh, give, uh, I will address some of the special features in, Norwegian, in the Norwegian procurement system. And finally, I will give you some practical uh, advice. The public sector in Norway spent more than 398 billion kroners, uh, that is 167 billion litres, on supply and services each year. This constitutes more than 15% of the gross national product in Norway. Procurement over EU thresholds is estimated to be around 80 billion or 34 billion litres. Norway is one of those countries in, in EU, EU that awards most contracts in percent to tenders in uh, other member states.
The Commission has in 2011 done a study, uh, to study that was aimed to measure the public cross procurement in, Euro in Europe. According to this, the average in EU is that 1.6% of all contracts published on TED are awarded directly to tenders in other member states. This represents 3.5% of the value of the published contracts. Mo most countries have a share of cross-border procurement close to the average. However, in Norway, 4.7% of the contracts are awarded directly to tenders in other member states. 8% of the value of the published contracts. And yeah, <laughs> this illustrates this. <laughs> The difference between the average in EU and Norway are even bigger if you include so-called indirect cross-border procurements. With indirect, I here mean procurements where domestic bidders include foreign subcontractors or foreign bidders submit offers in consortia with local firms in, all, in order to participate. The study shows that, in the, uh, that the average share of indirect cross-border procurement in the EU is 11.4%. In Norway, however, the share of indirect cross-border procurement is 22.7%. That is over 10% higher than the average in the EU. The study by, uh, by the Commission shows that, Norwe that the Norwegian that Norway should be an interesting market for foreign bidders. Lithuanian companies have shown to be very competitive, especially in the private construction market in Norway, and are likely to be equally competitive in the pub public uh, construction market. Norway is as a member of the European Economic Area and the party to the EEA agreement. Through the EEA agreement, Norway has implemented the EU legislation on public procurement. Consequently, Norwegian legislation on public procurement coincides with the relevant applicable EU legislation in matters where relevant EU thresholds regarding contract value are met. It shall also be noted that the national legislation applies to a large extent also below the EU thresholds. As a matter of fact, the main rule in Norway is that, a public must, uh, a, that the public must follow the public procurement rules if the contract has a value over 500,000 kroners. Directive 2004-17 and Directive 2004-18 EC have been implemented into Norwegian legislation through three different pieces of legislation. The Procurement Act of 1999, which is of general application and includes principle, principles applicable to public procurement such as inter alia, equal treatment and transparency. The detailed provision for the procurement procedure are set out in two legislation. The procurement regulation of 2006, which implements Directive 2004-18 EC, and the utilities regulation of 2006, which implements Directive 2004-17 and is applicable to contracting entities that pursue activities in the water, energy, transport and postal service sector. The regulation consists of three different parts. Part one uh, is applicable on all contracts. This, reg uh, this sets out some basic principles that the public has to follow when, when, um, when <laughs> uh, 
when? No. <laughs> part one sets out some basic rules that the public has to follow. Part, <laughs> part two um, covers contracts over 500,000 and up to EU thresholds. This includes services that are not listed in Directive 2004-18 Annex 2, independent of value. Part three regulates procurements over EU thresholds. The, part, the rules in part two and three are quite similar, but it's a higher degree of flexibility in part two. Inter alia, there is a wider access to negotiations. All contracts uh, following the part two and three has to be published on dofin.no, which is the Norwegian database for public procurement notices. This will therefore be an important site for suppliers who are interested in finding new opportunities in the public and utility sector. I included a, a link to the English version of uh, Dauphin in, uh, in my slides. Environmental and social consideration have a central place in procurements in Norway. The government has stated that procurement in the public sector should take place with a minimum of environmental impact and with respect for fundamental workers' rights and human rights. The duty to take social considerations are expressed several places in the legislation. In Thalia, the Procurement Act, paragraph 6, states that the contracting authority shall, under the planning of each procurement, take into consideration the life cycle, costs, and envi en environmental consequences of the procurement. Social consideration can be maintained throughout all phases of, of the procurement process. For example, through technical specification, into all your materials, methods, etc., et through selection criteria, typical management systems, through award or, um, or through award procedure. For example, through sub criteria as quality, life cycle costs, etc. They can also be pursued through criteria in contract clauses. For example, fair trade clauses. As a main rule, it's up to the contracting authority how he will, how he will pursue these considerations. In certain areas, there are, however, given some minimum requirements. And I will focus on these in the following. Increased labor integration has led to what Norwegian governments refer to social dumping in some industries. Social dumping is deemed to be present both when foreign employees are subject to breaches of health, safety and working environment regulations and if they are paid wages that are in Norwegian standards unacceptably low. To come to social, social dumping, Norwegian government has laid down a number of provisions. An example, An example of this is, this is uh, the uh, 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 paragraph 344 in the regulation that states that, states that contract contracting authorities, authorities shall in shall all contracts, contracts or 100,000 100, owners require, require an, an uh, uh, AES self-declaration. Foreign contract contracts must confirm, confirm that preparing the preparing the tender, the tender account, account has been taken, taken of the health of the health related environment, environment and safety related, 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 related legislation set out in the regulation related, related to the domestic health environment, environment and safety, and safety activities, activities and